Welcome, my friends. Welcome. And happy Halloween to you. Welcome to the Gaming Galleon. I'm Captain Raz, an adventurer on the high seas, the Silicon Seas. Who every voyage takes you to a far off land. Usually, we have to pop a game into the navigator, and the navigator can whisk us off to a place around the world. Today, we had to go straight up because we are celebrating on this Halloween season, in my opinion, a game that is very in tune with the most wholesome aspect of Halloween, trick-or-treating. Something that not everyone gets to celebrate anymore. If you're older and you don't have a little one to tout around, it's not something you get to experience anymore. Now, luckily, I happen to have some younger people in my life that I can use as proxy to still get out there to this day. And I plan to. I plan to. In just a few days will be the Halloween season, Halloween proper. And I will don myself in my costume. I'll be dressing up as a wizard this year. I've got my robe. I've got my floppy hat. I've got my belt pouch. I've got my backpack. And I've got my staff. And I'm all ready to get out there. Trick-or-treating has become a lot different than it was when I grew up. But the charm is there nonetheless. And the adventure of finding out what's behind all of those doors that are warmly lit with smiling faces on the other end and bowls of loot and candy is still fantastic, exciting, and alluring, even in this modern age. Getting back to the trick-or-treating of video games, well, when you're trick-or-treating, the object is to try and get as much candy as possible. Well, there was an era where a certain video game made it so that the object was to obtain as many characters as possible. And that is what we'll be playing today. Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. This is a daunting series for anyone who doesn't know anything about it. What you may know is it involves action figures. But if you've never played it, maybe that's about all you know. The great thing about Skylanders is that it really plays well into any holiday. Because among the Skylands, there is a different area for everything under the sun. Whether it be Christmas or Independence Day, or Arbor Day, or even Halloween. So, what we're going to do today is we are going to be going into one of the spookier areas in Skylanders, and we are going to be using nothing, nothing but characters who would fit in the realm of this spooky season. There are five games of Skylanders. This is the first. It was available for at least three systems, and it basically had characters all of the same size, but different abilities. Fire, and water, and plants. Let's see if I can find one. Here's one. There are too many Skylanders to say what their names are. At least for me. <laughs> but I bet I, this guy apparently uh, has crystals for hands. And if I re remember correctly, he can focus his hands to create beams of light to destroy enemies. There was the Giants series. Where they decided to make bigger. I'll take this guy. 
bigger Skylanders, about twice the size as the original ones. And the fun thing was, was as the games went on, all of the older Skylanders could be used. Used? How? We will show you. The Swap Force, probably my favorite series, were characters that allowed you, provided you have two of them, to swap their torsos with their legs. Pop, 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 pop. Giving them the abilities of their torso and feet. Pretty fantastic. After that was the trap team. The trap team had very defined characters. And in addition, there was the ability to trap bosses that you encountered in the worlds of Skylanders and then used those crystals to call upon the bosses themselves and control them. The easiest way to describe that would be, say, Ghostbusters. You could trap different bosses in the Skylands into crystal traps and then use them for your very own. The Superchargers it was the only series I didn't get into, and that was because I was just a critical mass at this point. But the interesting thing about the Superchargers, the fourth series, was that was when they incorporated racing. Well, I don't have any Superchargers. I have a garage with which they could be maintained and parked for storage. And then finally, the final game in the series were the Imagineers. The Imagineers were big and bold. Let's see if we've got a good one here for you. This guy's pretty cool. Oh yeah, look at this. They were larger, they had larger bases, and the most interesting thing about the Imagineers was in addition to playing Skylanders that were just figures that you bought like any other, you could also use these capsules where you could keep a Skylander that you made of your very own, your own custom built from the ground up Skylander. Well, how did I get these many Skylanders? Look, people were dumping these things left and right for a couple years there. Okay? And some of them, like any other video game or collectible, some were more expensive than others. So I did a little bit of homework. And I got to learn about which ones were good and which ones were not were common. And uh, I would buy a lot, and sell off one to cover the rest. The rest is history. <laughs> so, have I played these to death? No, I've never beaten a Skylanders game in my life. But... I have enjoyed them. I've been able to give them to friends if they wanted to play them. Uh, young ones who wanted to give it a go. It's a very approachable game. The problem is, is you need these. Which is why to this day a lot of people maybe don't play them. It makes me wonder where we are as far as the emulation scene with Skylanders. Where is the line drawn? Is it possible to use all of the characters in Skylanders in an emulated scenario, unlike what we'll be doing, which is playing it off a Nintendo Wii? I don't know. No idea. 
I know we need these guys though to get off the ground. So let's get started. It's Skylander's Spyro's Adventure. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Of course, at the bottom of the hour, we'll be opening up the chest. Uh, there is a deal in there. Pretty good one. So we'll be checking that out. And then at the bottom of the hour, top at the end of the show, we'll be opening up the bag that tells no tales where one of you were nice enough to send a question my way to address in front of all. Okay? All right, let's get started. It's uh, Skylanders. For the Nintendo Wii. We start in Limbo. And this is what you're faced with if you have no Skylanders. As soon as you boot up the game, you could own the disc. As soon as you boot up the game and begin your adventure, you'll be faced with this. Okay? <laughs> now, usually these got incorporated in with, uh, you know, packed in, but if you just found this game on the shelf in the pawn shop, you're skunked. Obviously, we're prepared. And we have a quest we'll be dealing with. It all has to do with this young lady here. And here's the portal. Do you see her? There she is. When I am near. Nope. Hold on a second. I'm placing her on now. The cootie queen. All right. The cootie queen. What I wanted to do here was try and upgrade her a little bit. We're going to go treasure hunt. No storyline stuff today. We're on the hunt to find the cootie queen a new power. Let's talk to this fairy here. Oh, we need money. Oh, you hit. And as you can see here, there's a skull shield. It costs $3,700. However, it also says you need a soul gem that is located in the cadaverous crypt. Okay? So. That's the plan. So, we're going to create a little strike team here. And we'll put take uh, the Cootie Queen off for now. And we're going to replace her with this guy here. A skeleton with a shield and a sword. What's his name? Serator. Alright. Now you do get to name your characters, which is a nice touch. I named him Serator because he's got a serrated knife and he kind of looks like Skeletor from He Man Masters of the Universe. Okay? Alright. We're passing the pirate ship here, going along the ruins to the underground where a skeleton. It's going to allow us in. Well, seeing as how you did help me recover the rest of my body. To the cadaverous caverns. Oh, cadaverous crypt. My mistake. Now, I haven't been in here. So I'm not sure what to expect. We have to find the soul gem. Okay? This is the Nintendo Wii, so we are using a Wiimote and a nunchuck. Huh. 
All righty. The skeleton key is down here in this crypt somewhere. And don't you worry. I won't run out on you this time. Oh, boy. They're creepy. Just be sure you don't run too far ahead, or else... We might get separated. <sighs> well, guess I'll just wait out here. All right, fair enough. We're on our own. Okay. Uh... Uh-oh. We've got our strike team here. I decided to go in with the serrator because, uh... Anyway. Always good to have a, a safe sword. We have a couple other moves. Look at this. Hmm. Two ways. This could be a problem. What are you doing with that candle? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Fire, huh? I think I have anybody with fire. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm just gonna open all these up. Let's try this one. Oh, here we go. Oh, I don't care about this. Yeah, yeah. There's story stuff all over the place. Who cares? What's important is that we get some money and we find that that uh, power for uh, what's her face? What's her name? Cutie Queen. I don't know what the power is going into. I see a treasure. Oh boy. Okay. You'll notice that the, the game is constantly throwing new monsters at you. It's a kid game, so, you know, they, they're going to incorporate all this stuff. I don't really care. This is the perfect guy for this, though, because he's got a shield. Wow, these guys are strong. Don't they have another move? Oh, man, these guys are cutting Serrator down like crazy. Where's my other... That's oh boy, Serrator's going down. Ah! Arrows are not good. Is that a golden tooth? Am I poisoned? No, I'm just hurt. Okay. There we go. Whew. Wow, Serrator got the job done, but things are going pretty nasty, so I'll tell you what. Let's bring in another guy. We'll take off Serrator for now. We've got a ghost along the way. Let's give him a go. Poltergeist. Now, Serrator's not out, but he is hurt. <clears throat> and if he dies, he's out of the quest. It's not like the toy breaks or anything, but you can't use them. And we've only got four monster related Skylanders. For Spyro's adventure. We've got 10 million others, but. I really just want to, it's Halloween, so I just want to stick with the monster ones. And plus, we wouldn't want to make it too easy. Pancakes! Hold on! Let's get these pancakes to Serrator. Alright, Paul, you're back on. Oh, 
Oh, come on. Ugh, jeez. Uh, okay. Where? I hope I didn't pick the wrong way. Where's this soul gem? You know what? What about that treasure chest? Was there no way to get that? It was over here on the right, right? Oh boy, we're blocked in. Okay. Now what? It's a magician. A ghost magician. Mm. Oh, you transformed him. Oh boy. Okay, Paul. Yeah, I got it. Got him. Not sure what this camel's gonna be. All kinds of little doorways and things to bust up to get money. And money uh, comes in pretty handy because you can get new moves for it. All I wanted was stupid gems to kill that. Oh my god. Kill the little ones and kill the Ha ha ha. Got a pretzel. Okay. Catacombs. Oh, he's transforming him, but he's blocked. Oh, jeez. We're gonna go around. Hey, is that the soul gem? Oh, man, that's not the one we need. That's for trigger happy. Ah. No, I don't want to preview trigger happy. Very cute. They, 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 you can find new moves or characters you don't have, and then they give you a trailer so you're enticed to go buy them. <laughs> Devious franchise, my friends. Devious franchise. Oh, that was too good. This guy's really good. Oh, come on, another one? Kill those little ones. Oh, that, that wall is breakable. Boy, Paul's really good against these guys. He can turn himself into a ghost. He's in invincible. Alright, treasure chest. What do we got? Uh, looks like a harp, some gems. A lantern. Come on, you made another one? Die already. This guy's still alive. Look at him. He's smart. Alright, we got him. Oh, if you kill him, the big guy, his power gets eliminated. Oh, interesting. Can I open up this cavern? The soul jump. Maybe I get up more than sure. Is there anything to go do this way? I don't think so. This is where we found Trigger Happy's thing, right? Alright, let's push this cannon to a place where we can blow something. Oh, great. Whoops. Wait a minute. You know what? Just for safety's sake. Oh, I see why. Well, I'm still gonna Zombies. Oh boy, Paul's getting hurt. Use fire or cannons. There we go, that guy. I'm just gonna Hail Mary this. 
weapon in that move? Oh, sorry. The train is I'm not sure if this is going to do anything, but I'm going to just hail Mary into over this cliff just in case there's some sort of wall in there. Or oh, there was a wall. I thought there was a all right, Paul, you take a breather. Let's get Chow Chow back in. Serena returns. He's pretty hurt too, though. Oh boy. Oh boy. You need a tech sky. Okay, well, we were gonna stick with just undead, but now I'm a little worried that. No, no, it, it should just be a hand. There's no soul gem. Alright, forget that. How are we doing on time? It's been about 10 minutes, I'm sure, right? Oh boy. Alright, we better take a break here for now. We hit a dead end. So we'll stop there for now. And we'll check out what's going on in the chest, okay? Alright, where are we at here? Um, transition. Alright, you hold down the fort there, Serrator. I'll be right back. What can I say? It's fascinating. We just found a portal that would use, uh, need, uh, a robot-based Skylander, okay? We're not going to go that way, or a gear-based Skylander. Someone who uses, I don't know, machines. Here's one. Trigger hat. He's the one who we just got that power for, the infinite ammo power. He's got a couple guns, he's out of his mind. Okay? But we're not going to go that way, because I'm pretty sure... But what's behind there is just some gear. Usually to go through those portals, you'll end up finding gear, hats, that can give you uh, passive bonuses. I usually don't use them because the hats look kind of stupid. Like, you know, Serrator, he's already got a helmet. Why would I put a second hat on there? You know what I'm saying? Let's see a couple other... Uh, Halloweeny Skylanders from other series. You can only use the earlier ones in the early game, but as the games, as they made more games, like uh, Serrator here, you can use him in all five games. Some of the later ones, let's see, we got uh, this one's from Trap Team, I think. No, yeah, Giants maybe? It's uh, a guy who runs around on uh, a mounted skeletal bird. And he's got a pole arm. It's pretty cool. I've never played this guy. <clears throat> You've got uh, mini versions of bigger Skylanders. This one's a eye brawl. Eye brawl. Uh, a mini version of the larger muscular eye brawl. And uh, this one's really neat. This one. So it's just some wacko. Uh, with a giant pair of scissors. Never played this guy. He looks great. Okay? That's it, man. It's crazy. There's everything out there. Uh, you know, it just get, it's, I can understand why people got into it, but the prices is crazy. Now, these days, you know, you may be able to find at least some common ones for, you know, pretty cheap. Find a handful. And it's a fun game. There's leveling, there's looting, you know, there's upgrading, there's uh, fantastic uh, places to go to, so on and so forth. Anyway, let's see what's going on in the booty, all right? Okay, so... So I was at this retro store, and, you know, everybody's getting to the point where they're not just letting stuff sit around anymore, okay? Everything has been barcoded. Everything can be easily QR-coded to find its exact value. 
And if it's something, a platform that isn't very interesting, maybe they'll bundle it. So this place, for a little while, was bundling 10 old carts for a set amount price. I believe they were doing 10 Game Boy games for $25. These are the most common games you can think of. Alleyway, you know, four-in-one carts, things of that nature. And they also had Atari stacks. Atari 2600 stacks. 10 games for $10. Again, very common. But there was one stack that I thought was worth bringing back to the ship. Their Atari games. And they were 10 for a dollar. 10 for a dollar each? 10 for 10? However, these are not Atari 2600 games. They are Atari 7800 games. The price tag is right here, and we can see the first game, $9.99, we've got a helicopter there. The rest, I haven't looked at this in a long time, like, I've been sitting on this for, for a long time, so I'm not sure what games are in here, but Atari 7800 games for a buck each is a really good deal, okay? So let me unwrap it, and we'll look at them blindly together, okay? Trying to get the, the top. I don't want to just pull them all apart. All right, here we go. So the first one on the top, Choplifter. Not bad. Not bad. Very cool 2D shooter uh, that also has you landing in a war zone, blowing up a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh prisons, camps, prison camps, where there are, you know, um, missing in action allies. You blow up the door, they start pouring out, then you land and give them enough time to get into the, the, the chopper. All the while, there are tanks coming your way. You have to clear the area long enough to land let these guys in, and then fly them back to friendly uh, territory. Pretty addictive game. Good stuff. All right. Can I open this sucker? Get out of my way, Skylanders. All right, so All right what's the next one? Food fight. Excellent, excellent. You're this a really ravenous guy who's on the right side of the screen, and all he wants is ice cream. The ice cream's on the left side of the screen. In between him and the ice cream are piles of different food. Bananas, relish, burgers, meatballs, and three angry chefs looking to track him down. So he's got to grab a handful of relish and throw it in their face so that he can clear the way and get the ice cream. Very exciting game. All right, what's next here? What do we got? Centipede! <laughs> Personal favorite of mine. I'm, I don't, I, I, I kind of lean toward the 2600 version. But Centipede is Centipede. I've played the hell out of it. Love it to this day. That's a good one to have. What are you playing? An elf with a bow? It's hard to tell that when you're playing the 2600 version. It just looks like a, a square. All right. Pole position two. A little racing in this lot. The, uh, this was the pack-in game for the Atari 7800. Every Atari 7800 came with pole position 2. Love it or hate it. You're racing in an F1 racer. 
Prepare to qualify. Jordan versus Bird. One on one. Look at them there. They're having the time of their lives. They're in the prime of their career. And you know that because they're on the Atari 7800. They look great. Boy, look at the tube socks going on there, huh? No snakes are going to bite them. All right. Let's go. What's this? Mario Brothers. Wow. Obviously, Nintendo title on an Atari. Even even on the Atari, that's a premium price for as far as Atari games are concerned. I'm not sure how much this one would go for these days. Probably in the ten to twenty dollar range. We got it for a buck, and you get to play with a friend. That's pretty good. Galaga. Beautiful on the Atari 7800 Pro System. Beautiful game. One of the best ones out there. Very good. Let's put it right here by the Galaga machine. Get out of my way, guys. Okay. What do we got next? What's this? Oh, Joust? Joust. Very good. Very good. You're flying around on an ostrich. There's other guys flying around on ostriches. Don't ever let them get the drop on you. you got to come down on them. Otherwise, it's curtains. Very easy. And again, a great two-player game, both competitively and cooperatively. Very good. We got two more here. Donkey Kong. Boy, this is like Arcade Haven here. Another Nintendo title. Not bad at all. Okay. Boy, he's just holding her with one hand. That can't be good for her back. Okay. And finally, what we got here? Miss Pac-Man. Very good. Very good. Very good in the 7800. Not bad. Not bad at all. So in the arcade realm, very common. And in the 7800, most of these are very common. But the 7800 library, every you're just not going to get games for a dollar. Especially at this caliber. I mean, maybe Jordan versus Bird, maybe. Pole position, it's a packing game, maybe, but I doubt it. Uh, Mario Brothers, definitely going to bring in a little coin. Uh, great deal. Ten Atari 7800 games for $10. Not bad. All right, let's get back to uh, Skylanders. I <laughs> we have to find that Soul Gem... For the Cootie Queen. If we can find it, we'll play as her. Okay? But we gotta get out there and find out where the heck this thing is. Let's get back to it. It's a Skylander Spyro Adventures in the spooky cadaverous crypt. Time's running out. We better get to it. And start my controller back up. Got the designer Luigi controller. Don't be impressed, I'm not. Alright. Oh, it looks like I kept the audio going the whole time. Has that been beeping? <laughs> Have you been beeping the whole time, Serrator? Let's see. That has been just the music. That's all. Okay, here we go. Oh, let's switch up. 
It's a raider, sir. We're running out of time anyway. So let's put in uh, another undead warrior. A dragon. Okay? An undead dragon. Oh boy. I'm having issues. Oh my god. Quadra dead. Okay. You'll notice the little uh, <clears throat> yellow line there. That's what level Quadra dead is. Level 5, still coming up. Is there no way out of here? Oh wait, let's take a right. Okay, down here. Oh boy. This is labyrinthian. Epic proportion here. Okay. Skylanders of the undead element are stronger Good. in this zone. Oh my god. Oh, big shot! Stop shooting me! Whew, most of this water a little bit. Okay. Quadra Dead's pretty good. It's just kind of uh, the ability to teleport. It's you need an Earth Skylander. Boy, I sure hope the Soul Gem's not there. It's got to be in the level. It's got to be. I'm going to have faith that it's out here somewhere. We're on a timer here, so we can't be, you know, turning over every stone. Activate. Shoot it. That's okay. I'm going to switch. It'll help us push the cannon. There's spider eggs. Gross. does more than oh nice no, no. she does more than just teleport she leaves uh, some ghosts behind you notice a little ghost there and uh, those possess uh, her hands okay. come on where's that soul gem dude This could be anywhere. Okay, the key to what? Oh, here's a pie. Let's give this to uh, Palter Guy. Uh oh, what did I do with Palter Guy? Oh no, I lost him amongst all the other Skylander. Oh wait, here he is. He's on the floor. Have a pie. Oh, did he teleport? <gasps> What's this? Oh, wow. A golden randomizer. <laughs> Worth 800. Nice. Alright, let's go back to Quadrabed. So you can tell there's a lot of twists and turns in the, in the levels, so 
They're definitely for the two game. And it's two player. You can play with a friend. Or your sister or something. And, you know, you, you, you would have to have a heart of stone to not find a Skylander that you can get behind. There's just so many options, so many different approaches. I think there's like somewhere around uh, eight to nine different elements of Skylander. As I said, we're playing the, the Halloween-y, the undead Skylanders for today's adventure only. So you can kind of tailor make your adventure again, you know, for the holidays if you want to keep things Halloweeny. Stick with your Halloweeny uh, Skylanders in your collection. Go on a little adventure. Find Skylanders of the fire element are stronger in this zone. No. Wow, look at that interaction. I think I dropped the Skylanders. They're all over the place here, They're like cockroaches. Is this where we started? It looks like it. Okay, so this... This should curve around to that treasure chest, I think. Oh boy, I'm gonna take out the conditions. Keep killing the magicians, then the big one will go down. Oh! I got that one. There's another magician and an archer. There's the magician. The the amount of monsters, enemies, very varied as you, you saw at the beginning of the level, they're introducing us to level to characters. The monsters will be facing in here in the Kendavis place. And uh, we're 16 chapters into this game, and they're still showing us new characters, so it's pretty, uh... Okay, we need to clean the Is there any other way out of here? Uh -huh. Okay, so... I'm gonna have to turn the can and I'm put it back over there. Maybe for left of the soul chip. We're gonna let Quadra go take a break. Bring some Quadra had her in this treasure chest, so we'll let her in. That was a big fight. Tough shape. I wonder if he's gonna make it. We're gonna get this cannon back over onto the turntable. So we can open up these other walls. Fire in the hole! news. There's no fire here. And we're not pulling a fire. This seems like it's like the way we're supposed to go. I can't. I can't attack these guys. Please be the soul gem. Alright. Is this where we started? It is. We just went in a circle. So let's see what's over here. Oh, it's just some silver. Now, Serrator's level nine. This is like chapter sixteen, so he can still take. He can still be hurt. He can't even hurt these guys because he doesn't have fire. Oh, jeez. 
So if you bring like a level one Skylander in here, they might have a hard time. Oh right, Serrator has the ability to get health back. If you defeat somebody. Is that a chicken leg? Skeleton key this you wanted? Wow! You found the skeleton key. This will open the gates to the creepy citadel. Hey, but it also does this. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Comes in pretty handy looking through keyholes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Save that for okay. later. That's T-bone, by the way. That's it. Oh, man. We didn't find it. Oh, but dang. That's tough, man. Oh, well. Where's uh, my hand? It's hard to find anything with all these Skylanders all over the place. Oh, there it is. So that's Skylanders. Um, spooky little adventure, wholesome, easy to get into. You can challenge yourself by going into one of the higher chapters uh, with a lower level Skylander. It can get difficult. The, the monsters can be strong if you want to play it that way. But really, this game isn't really about challenging. It's really just having a little wholesome fun, maybe having a Skylander or two of your own that you can name and explore with. And as long as you don't dump a lot of money into Skylanders, it can be a good time. So I would recommend it, especially if you have someone younger or uh, maybe a loved one that you can share the adventure with. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at the uh, mailbag. Someone was nice enough to send old Cap and Raz a letter. It's all the way at the bottom of the bag. Let's see what they have to say. I, I don't I don't even know if I... This isn't the, the letter I was looking for. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I think that might be an old letter. Here's the one I'm looking for. Okay. Dear Cap and Rance, Can you give a brief history on the harp of transition? Where was it obtained? And how did you acquire it? Well, as you may or may not know, 
the harp of transition brings us from here in the captain's quarters out into the adventures that we have on every voyage. It has become an integral part of the gaming galleon. But that wasn't always so. <laughs> I remember when we first got, we were first uh, deciding if we were going to actually share the gaming galleon with the rest of the world, and we were going to make a show. I remember that I wanted to have an instrument, some way for everyone to recognize that we were moving from our adventures back to the ship, and vice versa. Well, I'm not the most imaginative pirate in the world, so my plan was to have a whistle, a sailor's whistle. I don't have a sailor's whistle, so I can't tell you the sound that they make, but if you've ever seen a naval movie and you hear that sound, that whistle that happens before the captain comes over the loudspeaker, in a naval movie and even in Star Trek, they still use it, at least uh, in the old generation, the original series. They always had a whistle before Captain Kirk talked. Anyway, that was the sound that I wanted. That's what I, the sound that I figured was appropriate. So I ordered a sailor's whistle. And unfortunately, it came late. We had a plan as to when we were going to first have our maiden voyage so many years back. And it came late. So, being the good captain I am, I looked around at the resources we had, and we happened to have this harp that I found at a thrift store maybe about a week back. That's right. You can find the most magical, enduring things at a thrift store, and the harp of transition is no exception. Well, we used it because it was all we had. And when we came back to port, I eventually, a couple of days later, received the sailor's whistle. And frankly, I wasn't very happy with it. It was cheap, it was small, and it didn't sound very commanding. So, I had to figure out something else. But, sometimes, the best commands, and the best wisdom doesn't come from yourself. It comes from those around you. So when First Mate Bismuth suggested that the harp was great and that we should continue on with it and use the power found within to transition us from magical place to magical place, I was in far from any position to argue. So here she sits, years and years later to this day, a product of happenstance, good timing, and wise advice from a good friend. Now you may ask yourself, gee whiz, it's a little worse for wear. Some of the strings have been plucked. There's not many left. It looks as if there's five of them left. What happens if they all one day pluck? Does the magic escape? This beautiful instrument that's been on, on board guiding us for all these years? Well, maybe. I can't say for sure. We haven't reached that point. It's been... 
steady enough that it needs no maintenance. But if we ever come to that point, God forbid, we happen to have a backup <laughs> that to this day I have never opened. Whether we would adopt this or gut it to put it on the strings of the Hartford transition herself, only time in the future can tell. Thank you, T Mac. Thank you for the question. If you have a question, I'm not hard to find. And the bag is never, ever full. So feel free to pick your brain so that you can pick mine on another voyage. Thank you for joining me. I hope everyone has a happy Halloween. We'll sail again one day. I'm not sure when. And I'm not sure where. But I know one thing for certain. Wherever we go, and whatever we do, we're going to do it together. So until next time, I want an adieu to ye fair Spanish maidens. Farewell and adieu, ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to explore the skylands. And lo, nevermore shall we see ye again. Keep your powder dry, mateys. <laughs>